worthwhile because I haven't got to them. It's flowering at the opposite end of the year. Yes, it shouldn't be flowering. Oh, it shouldn't be? Oh. But it, it does. It made a mistake. <laughs> That's these things. Is apparent. Oh, all right. I will cover that in a moment. Oh, terrific, yeah. So rather than the normal um, P to Z or whatever of species, we're going to use the story of evolution of these plants mm. and their nearest neighbour to guide us around the genus. Now, oh, my next slides. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Can you close the blinds or are we good for that? I reckon that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. 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 Okay, these are the sort of topics we're going to uh, look, look at. Um, it will be around uh, our evolution, or supposed evolution, of course. There's no fossils to really tell us definitively. But uh, we'll survey some of the mesens that are thought to be the closest relatives of common phyton. Uh, then we'll look at how the genus is organised into groups. Uh, I'll say a bit about uh, the advantages of being very small. Because these are amazing plants. I mean, there's very few other plants quite as small, just a pair of leaves. So uh, certainly nothing in the British world like that. And then we'll have a look at how they might have achieved this smaller size and indeed become quite a large genus, a successful genus. Some adaptations and diversity. And I'll tell you a bit about uh, where they grow. Uh, because a large part of the talk is going to be cultivation and propagation. But we'll have to wait for that. That's towards the end. I hope you get that far. I do like uh, yeah. uh, build your questions as we go, so don't spoil them up. <laughs> well, here's uh, Stephen, he's a hammer himself. Um, I've seen him since then. Uh, 2018, yes. Over to Vista, California, where he has his nursery. Um, he's best known, of course, as an author in this country. Um, he makes a living in selling plants these days, although it's not that much of a living. He didn't have some rather rich parents. He never would have got into this. Um, and indeed, all of it, uh, we've got to thank him and give a big uh, credit for sorting out the, the naming of these plants. Now, here's a favourite diagram of mine. Uh, let me try and explain it. Um, so we've got a time scale of zillions of years along mm -hmm. here, millions of years before pre the present. And um, the other axis here, the number of plant, oh sorry, I believe, of life, that's animals and plants together. Um, so we start with the blue in fact, this is life appearing in the oceans, in the water, um, probably beyond 600 million years ago. And then, more recently, within the last 500 million years, life gets going on land as well, and uh, eventually overtakes a number of species in water as well. And the third, uh, that's just the running total of the all. I really like this diagram. Mm. What's interesting here is this general shape of it. It's the slow start and then things exploding in diversity. Um, but the principle here is that life begats life. Um, the more species you get to be in a, a unit area, the more complex they can become each becoming specialised, and we're going to see that pattern uh, applying to our supplements as well. Uh, just as an aside, we've got the extinctions marked here, and the extinctions really don't make much difference, much difference at all, which is quite interesting. Uh, they're recovered so quickly that they don't feature on this. Oh, um, presumably they didn't all. I mean, it didn't kill everything. No. No, some, that, that some, would be some, some families, yeah. but some here yeah. families did. but, uh, didn't come back, did they? Right. Right. Other things go into the empty space so quickly. Oh, I see, yeah. Um, <coughs> that's, that's what's happened. Okay. Anyway, that's just the background. Now well, let's think about the Mesen family. <laughs> um, so it's thought they first diverged from other plants, 
uh, tens of millions of years ago. Um, but um, there's evidence to suggest that a rapid speciation only happened in the last five to ten million years ago. Um, and it's not just the mesems as well. Other groups of succulents, like the cacti and the agave, uh, show the same pattern. Uh, this has been linked to changes in the atmosphere, uh, changes in the climate of the whole planet Earth, of course. Um, so the carbon dioxide fell, so did temperatures, and Earth became a, a drier place. And one possible reason for that to happen would be some of the plants, or a lot of the plants, rather, <coughs> switching over to um, C4 photosynthesis. That's the grasses and so on becoming so widespread on the planet. C4 is more efficient than the usual C3 method, because um, it accounted for the drop in the carbon dioxide. Uh, the paper that uh, wrote all this up for succulents anyway was Eric Kaki et al. Yeah, it's over 10 years ago now, but here's one of their diagrams. So you've got various families of succulents here, and you can see they all explode around the last, within the last 10 billion years. Although there is some doubt about the uh, mesems, the ice plants here, as to when they really diversify in Southern Africa. And in fact, I think the longer time scale has been <coughs> Uh, and this was the diagram they showed against the climate. So we've got the temperature of planet Earth dropping as the, um, first of all, the South Pole got covered in ice around about eight to 10 million years ago. And then when the North Pole got covered in ice, the temperatures dropped globally even more. And heredity follows that. Um, yes. Because obviously the continents are constantly moving. Yes. Is that taken into account? Yes, they're moving on a much longer time scale than this. Right. So we've got, oh sorry, I need to cross this one. Cross one. We've got 50 million years on the time scale there. Right. Well, uh, the Atlantic and uh, Gondwana split up over 120 million years ago, yes. right over here. So um, it's not relevant to. Oh, I just wondered how much yes. South Africa has moved, for example. Mm -hmm. South Africa has been remarkably stable. It's just drifted a tiny little bit further north, getting warmer. Okay, well, let's look at the Mesem family. Um, well, it doesn't exist anymore, actually. Um, <laughs> it, it's called the Azalaceae, um, and it's divided into subfamilies and the biggest one into tribes. Um, in the old days, there used to be a mesem family for all the stuff, mm -hmm. number four onwards. And these days, it's very useful to use the term mesem informally uh, in place of that. Uh, but the whole lot can be called ice plant because of those um, crystalline cells on the surface of the leaves that make them glisten. And even these um, first three subfamilies uh, have got those. Um, looking at the size of the different uh, groupings here, so we've got number of genera, the number of species. And you see that the um, first ones listed here, and these are in systematic order, um, evolutionary order. Um, so the early ones tend to have just a few genera, um, modest number of species, but then number five here, Ushioidi really exploded. It's this pattern of some breakthrough happening and uh, the plants becoming very successful quickly. And even within subfamily five, broken into the four tribes, you see the first three don't really do much, but then suddenly this most recent one, the Rushiama, has diversified into over a hundred genera and well over a thousand species. Uh, I can really emphasize that with a bar graph, which doesn't quite fit. It was lined up properly on my desktop screen, but uh, not to worry. Um, that, that really emphasizes this recent explosion pattern of 
tribulation. So let's look at some of these. Um, the, the early ancestors of all soft little herbaceous plants. Uh, but I think you can see they've got succulent leaves. So that, that's the key character for this family. Um, an example from South Africa of the second subfamily. Um, so here we've got tiny, tiny flowers, uh, but five petals. Um, they're not that um, distantly related from the cacti. Uh, they are in the same order of plants. Can I just make a comment about Suzuki and Cordulacastra? Oh yes, the it's last one. Yeah, it's incredibly um, successful. It's found all over the world. Yes, <laughs> thank you. And I actually saw it growing in the Galapagos. world. Right. Yeah. That's going to reinforce the message in a slide or two. Oh, uh, very good. <laughs> it was that uh, in the red, um, red in the Galapagos, Hazel? Sorry? Was it red in, in, the, in the Galapagos? Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, I saw it. Red shoots, yeah. Mm. Yes, like a third one, this is relatively new recognition of this as a subfamily. Um, but it's actually a tiny genus, but it doesn't look much different to the last two. Mm -hmm. And their distributions there, so here we show they've got global distributions. So they may not be diverse um, in terms of genera, mm -hmm. but they've got fantastic reach. Yeah, they've been very good at dispersing, with the exception of this recently recognized little genus which is still stuck down there in South Africa. <laughs> but I think you can deduce from that slide alone that the origin for all of these plants is down there in South Africa. And the next groups are going to reinforce that. Um, so now we're on to plants that are called mesent proper, um, but are still here relatively soft and herbaceous. The leaves are now getting bigger, and certainly now the flowers are more complex. They've got lots and lots of petals. It's starting to be something um, more spectacular that might attract pollinators. So that's from the Eastern Cape of South Africa, a map forming mesem. And finally, we get to the last subfamily, not the first tribe of it. Um, so it's a bit of a soft plant. You know, we haven't seen anything woody and shrubby yet, but we do have a pretty impressive flower with uh, uh, lots and lots of petals. And indeed, this particular genus has a very interesting method of dispersing its seed. Um, so pulling this one apart, there are the actual seeds, found seeds, but the capsule here disintegrates in nature. And uh, seed is trapped in a pocket in this papery um, division. And that acts as a wing to blow it around for um, wind distribution. But that's, that's very uncommon in the, in the meso. It's just a specialization in that genus. Um, the next tribe, the Gothiopii. Uh, gives this one that is popular as a bedding plant uh, here in the UK in summer. But it's short lived. It's annual. Um, it's available in many, many colours. Um, it's not that good as a garden plant, though, because one of the um, informal names for these plants are midday flowers. Mm -hmm. uh, they do close up at night. In fact, they only open for. Uh, three hours <laughs> a day. So 